is a mystery and power in the unique and distinctive art of Polynesia, in the people's spiritual beliefs and in their history. This exhibition, Atua, Sacred Gods from Polynesia, explores an unprecedented depth the Polynesian concept of gods. Atua are the beings associated with the sculptural works Polynesian people created in the many island communities in the Pacific, well before the time of extensive contact with Europeans. Many of these sacred objects were sculptures, mostly carved from wood, more rarely from stone or bone. Others are made from feathers, bark cloth, shell, and even vegetable fibers. The word atua has various meanings, depending upon the island, the language, and when the word was used. Artists such as George Nuku, Mahoriki Tangaroa, and Uruerania indicate the strength and diversity of contemporary feelings regarding Atua. Atua is a very potent word. Atua, in, in the context of the show, is talking about uh, div divine personages, or divine beings. The whole idea of divinity is kind of slightly different to divinity in the West, because in, in the, the notion of divinity within Polynesia once again, it's based on genealogy. In other words, I can trace my direct lineage to those gods depicted in that exhibition. Historically, our elders would imbue a, an object with uh, special powers, for example. Chiefs had their own uh, atuas for various things. The fishermen had them for fishing. For me, Atua is the presence of a non-physical being in the object, a god, if you like. In this exhibition, the presence of an Atua is something the viewer may experience. It may be the thrill of standing in the presence of an Atua from a remote island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, a battered god, one that has lost his arms. Ah. Uh -uh from the British Museum, originally from the island of Rurutu, bursting with life from every feature of this body, to the case of Tu, from the island of Mangareva, standing on his four legs, looking right through you, imparting a sense of strength in intense stillness. Many Atua began as deified human ancestors. In Polynesia, certain people are remembered for many generations after they die. Often, there were strong, gifted individuals who became great leaders. They conquered their enemies and improved life for their people. In the past, a number of these leaders had the ability to cross the ocean and find new lands. The exhibition examines these sculptural images island by island, from Fiji and Tonga in the west to the islands of central Polynesia, including the Cook, Austral Society in the Marquesas Islands, and far to the east, Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, and thousands of kilometers to the north, the Hawaiian Islands, to Aotearoa, New Zealand in the south. While there are many differing approaches within these island groupings, seen together, as in this exhibition, one can see many similarities and common concerns regarding their creation and what is meant by the word Atua, and why Atua was so closely associated with Polynesian people and their ancestors. Polynesian navigators had exceptional strength and endurance and used their extraordinary understanding of the ocean and the stars to explore and settle the vast area of the Pacific thousands of years ago. Their big, double-hulled canoes, Vaka, sailed for weeks or even months at a time across immense distances to extremely remote islands where the people landed, 
and eventually established communities. A number of Atua were carried on each of these dangerous voyages of exploration and conquest. Of the many wonderful works of this exhibition, a strong group of those found on Easter Island, Moi Kava Kava, gaunt, haunted with glittering eyes. These precious wood figures were created more than 500 years ago to contain Akuaku spirits and were treasured and looked after until Europeans and people from South America arrived and began to dominate the island. Tiki figures from Tahiti, from the Marquesas Islands and from New Zealand. It's a word that we're familiar with, yet when we look at these tiki figures included in this exhibition, we realise how much variety there is and how little we know about them. As you walk through the exhibition, you realise that these figures are some of the few surviving art objects that were the focus of so much belief and attention throughout Polynesia and which vanished so swiftly when the people abandoned their traditional religion for Christianity. Western missionaries regarded these art objects as idols, and the vast majority were smashed or burnt in an iconoclasm that was repeated across the region in the early 19th century. The few survivors, those taken as souvenirs by explorers, missionaries, the military and traders, are now to be found in museums scattered throughout the world. We discarded our cultural artefacts, our prized cultural pieces, our idols, our gods, for Christianity. So I think you know, there's, there is a story behind these pieces. What is the health of our culture? We need to think of a future generation, our children, and educating them with our histories, with our stories, with our culture. We need to be doing that right now. The exhibition Atua, Sacred Gods from Polynesia, features some 75 pre-Christian works of Polynesian art drawn from 30 collections, both public and private, in Europe, Russia, the Vatican, England and America, as well as our own collection here at the National Gallery. Many of these objects were collected some 200 years ago and until now have never left their institution. We're indebted to the many Polynesian people who worked with us to ensure this exhibition accurately represents essential elements of their cultural heritage. Without their help, we would not have been able to achieve an awareness that has enabled us to work with the presence in these objects. They understand that this major exhibition will break new ground and bring pre-Christian Polynesian gods to this part of the world, Australia, where people from Polynesia will be able to view for the first time their heritage in this exhibition devoted to their old gods, Atua.